Columbia Pictures vs. Court of Appeals In 1986, the Videogram Regulatory Board or VRB applied for a warrant against Jose Jinko, owner of Showtime Enterprises, for allegedly pirating movies produced and owned by Columbia Pictures and other motion picture companies. Jinko filed a motion to quash the search warrant but the same was denied in 1987. Subsequently, Jinko filed an urgent motion to lift the search warrant and return the article seized. In 1989, the RTC judge granted the motion. The judge ruled that based on the rulings in the 1988 case of 20th Century Fox Film Corporation vs. CA, before a search warrant could be issued in copyright cases, the master copy of the films alleged to be pirated must be attached in the application for warrant. Issue Whether or not the 20th Century Fox ruling may be applied retroactively in this case. Healed No. In 1986, obviously, the 1988 case of the 20th Century Fox was not yet promulgated. The lower court could not possibly have expected more evidence from the VRB and Columbia Pictures in their application for a search warrant other than what the law and jurisprudence, then existing and judicially accepted, required with respect to the finding of probable cause. The Supreme Court also revisited and clarified the ruling in a 20th Century Fox case. It is evidently incorrect to suggest, as the ruling in 20th Century Fox may appear to do, that in copyright infringement cases, the presentation of master tapes of the copyright film is always necessary to meet the requirements of probable cause for the issuance of a search warrant. It is true that such master tapes are object evidence with the merit that in this class of evidence the ascertainment of the controverted fact is made through demonstration involving the direct use of the senses of the presiding magistrate. Such auxiliary procedure, however, does not rule out the use of testimonial or documentary evidence, depositions, admissions, or other classes of evidence tending to prove the factum probandum, especially where the production in court of object evidence would result in delay, inconvenience, or expenses out of proportion to its evidentiary value. In fine, the supposed pronouncement in said case regarding the necessity for the presentation of the master tapes of the copyrighted films for the validity of search warrants should at most be understood to merely serve as a guidepost in determining the existence of probable cause in copyright infringement cases where there is doubt as to the true nexus between the master tape and the pirated copies. An object and careful reading of the decision in said case could lead to no other conclusion than that said directive was hardly intended to be sweeping and inflexible requirement in all or similar copyright infringement cases.